So uh, to break it all down, I would reference um, my guru, uh, Srila Prabhupada, and a film that came out about his life called Your Ever Well Wisher. And he comes from a sampradaya in India that goes back thousands and thousands of years of unbroken teachers. A sampradaya is it's, like a lineage A disciplic succession, parampara, mm -hmm. the dis disciplic succession. So his uh, spiritual master, his guru, Bhakti Siddhanta, said, you have to go to the West and spread this knowledge. Now, Prabhupada, at 70 years old, he was already in retired life, sannyasi. So for him to get on a ship and cross two oceans and have a heart attack, two heart attacks, and come to New York uh, because his guru told him to take the knowledge of the Vedas, whereas all yoga stems from the Veda means knowledge. Mm -hmm. So at 70 years old, he comes to New York, he gets robbed. He's, uh, you know, uh, just his life was about service. So... Uh, you know, down on the Lower East Side, opens up a storefront, all the yippies and the hippies and Allen mm -hmm. Ginsberg and everybody, and, and he starts the printing of his books. So, Bhagavad Gita as it is, Srimad Bhagavatam, all of this. So, um, this is back in, in, in the 60s. And uh, back when, and he, doing, came to, did, he came to New York in the 70s, though? No, he came to New York, I believe it was 66. Uh -huh. And he passed 60, in like 77. 77, right? yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, where he came to was the neighborhood where I live and grew up, basically, which was uh, a very dangerous uh, area for him to be down there. But that's the work. While all the other gurus were living up on Park Avenue, that's why I think he resonated with a lot of people. And especially with me when I found out about his story, because he came here with $7 and a case of books. Can you imagine at, seven, at 70 years old? Mm -hmm. Seven dollars and a case of books and the order of his guru and having faith in that order that his guru told him this is already preordained that this is going to happen. This is there's a golden period, you know, whatever the age of Aquarius. Everyone's looking for spiritual knowledge. Just go and everything will happen. And it did. People started joining. The temples got built and the books, the books went out. So when you see people uh, in the robes and the shaved head, those are the monks. So their job is to go out there and follow in the footsteps of the Acharya. Acharya means one who leads by example, and that's what Prabhupada did, and distribute those books to help the next person in line. So coming from where I came from, which was a life of violence and a life of crime and a life of drugs and just all the insanity that me and my brothers had to go through and still... Uh, you know, when I first met the devotees in 1980, I actually met them first in Washington, D.C. when I was hanging out as a punk rocker. Mm -hmm. And we used to, like, make fun of them dancing and all the punk rockers, we would just spoof on them dancing around on the street, you know, like punk rockers with the Hare Krishnas. Right. But then somebody tried to get, you know, we would see them all the time and they would be so nice and then some jerk-offs tried to, like, get in their face and, and I stood and I just got up and in the dude's face I was like yo back the fuck off dude don't do not do nothing to these people I'm gonna fucking smash you they're not bothering you fuck off and that was before that was got, before yeah. I got to New York but see that was and when I found out later it's all about in a, in a weird way that was doing some devotional service it was like you know, it it was planting a seed. I'm hearing the mantra. They gave me the food. They like, mm -hmm. and then even with the bad brains, um, when I was meeting them down in D.C., they I was I was in this health food store called Fields of Plenty, and they the guy would go to the temple every day and go get the food, and then bring it back. And I would like steal some of his food. And after working there for like two months. The guy goes, yo, you know, I know you stole my food every day. I was like, what? I did not, man. Because I, you know. Uh -huh. And he's like, yeah, but it's okay. It's spiritual food. You're supposed to steal it. There's no hard and fast rules. So it was everything leading. That had to be the first time anybody had said anything like that to you. No, hell no, because I, I was a little thief. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had to but he brought you, he brought you to the temple for the first time. Yeah. Right? But, uh, well, I went to the temple the first time when I got back to New York. 
And then uh, the Bad Brains got me a job at a health food store. And then all of that stuff mm -hmm. happened. It just kept happening and happening. And it was like, then when I read the book and knew understood the philosophy of what it is, Bhakti Yogi, it's about service to other people. It's about helping other people, uh, you know, spreading you know, the wisdom and stuff like that and renunciation and all this amazing stuff because, you know, it says that, uh, you know, religion without philosophy is fanaticism. And that's what you have today is a lot of fanatics. And then, you know, philosophy without religion or devotion is mental concoction. You need a combination of both. So when I read those books by Prabhupada, the, the Bhagavad Gita as it is, uh, the Ishapanishad, the Bhagavatam, all these little other books, Science of Self-Realization, which was uh, snippets of his lectures to people on certain topics, I was like, you know... Uh, and the main chapter that hit me was like spiritual solutions to material problems. Because everyone's trying to fix a material problem with another material answer. It don't work. What really starts healing people, and I needed healing because everything that I had gone through, lockup and the drugs and everything else, I needed to do some deep healing. Mm -hmm. And punk rock wasn't doing it. Nothing was doing it. It's only when I came in contact with bad brains and then that led me to the health food store and then I started going to yoga and then I started going to the temple and everything and reading the books and applying it because you know it's not just about being armchair philosophers that's one of the things Prabhupada said was that you don't just read this book and then okay I have this knowledge and I'm above you and I feel superior to you it's not about that it's about taking that knowledge and applying it to your life not being an armchair philosopher and staying humble Humility. You should always think of yourself lower than the straw in the street, devoid of all sense of false prestige, and always ready to offer respects and service to others. That's the mood that you're trying to cultivate as a devotee. And it just resonated so much with me because you would go to the temple, they would just make you feel so special. They would serve you hand and foot and sit down with you and, and talk philosophy. And I came at it very challenging. I was trying to defeat it because I thought I was Mr. Philosopher because I read Gurdjieff, Krishnamurti, all these books. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't defeat it. What's interesting to me is is your openness and receptivity to this, like the fact that you have this thirst for knowledge, this thirst for growth and expansion. And, you know, I've heard you talk about, you know, kind of the, you know, the process that led you to that, like meeting the bad brains and the impact that HR had on you and, you know, changing your relationship with food and all of these little kind of dominoes. But I'm not sure I totally understand what it was that actually catalyzed this shift from you know, sort of, you know, street Cretan type character to somebody who really like wanted to improve their life, their life, you know, right. like that, that thirst, like it's one thing to go, okay, I know I need to get my shit together and kind of begrudgingly drag yourself through some process of like, you know, uh, you know, cleaning house, but that's very different from, you know, a spiritual awakening where you're like, let me read that book. I can't wait to go see what Krishnamurti has to say. Like, where did that enthusiasm come from? Because that, that's self-generated. Um, I think it came from the fact that I started seeing how it was making me feel to meditate and making me feel how to do when I was doing yoga. And then how I felt when I went to the temple and chanted and, and got up and chanted Japa meditation, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra on beads. It wasn't anything that had to do with something I can explain mentally. It was going beyond the mind, beyond, you know, the spiritual uh, education and spiritual knowledge is something you have to live and experience.